or wants to rewatch it. Um, actually, the last one was on video. So if you want the link to the video, um, I can send you that. And we're getting this one on video and also on audio. And so the audio will be on iTunes. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get it done. Um, but I won't waste too much more time because we have a fantastic guest speaker today. Our third in our series. We're about halfway through our guest speaker series. And today um, we have a guest speaker who I reached out to and contacted through the Tri-Cities Hindu Temple. And I got a response back. And the gentleman said, uh, this is Dr. Karu. And I said, do you know how to get to the classroom? Do you know anything about Saginaw Valley State University? Uh, and he replied, yes, I used to sit on the Board of Regents here at Saginaw Valley. And uh, he played a role in the decision to uh, build the health sciences building right next door. So he's a little bit more than a, a regular guest speaker for us. Maybe you'll have other questions for him about that. But he's uh, definitely here representing the Tri-City Hindu Temple and his uh, own culture and uh, background. So I don't know much about him or his background, so I will be here to learn just as much as you will. So without further ado, Dr. Kalu. Thank you, John. So nice to see all of you, you know, bright young faces. My name is, as John said, Dr. I'm a surgeon in Saginaw. I've been here for more than 36 years. Uh, apart from doing operations, I've been associated with this university. I was in the Board of Control, and in fact, I was the chairman of the Board of Control here. Uh, now, I want to speak about Hindu religion. Before I speak about Hindu religion, let us find out what religion is. In order to understand religion, we need to understand human nature. If human nature is, you know, you know, some people are good, some are bad. What is that? So every human being has got two levels of function. One is a lower level, the other is a higher level. The lower level is struggle to survive. The higher level is love, respect, intellect, and uh, this, these levels are uh, actually represented in our brain. But the, our brain has developed the evolution over more than four to five million years. So the structure of the brain is, but I will include a little bit of medical in that because I'm a medical person. Brain is structured in general, three levels. One is the lowest level, called high brain or the middle level. In the middle. That area subserves the function of making the person survive, live. That is breathing, so respiration and circulation. The breathing and circulation is the function of the lowest part of the brain, that is the and brain or middle. The middle part is in respect to emotions, love, hate, anger, aggression. So these uh, functions were necessary in the early survival of our ancestors. You know, they fight, get food, and escape from danger and all that. So that level function is the middle level, that's called mid brain. And where the higher level is, the cerebral cortex. That is the area where reasoning, intelligence, and respect, love, everything is controlled by them. So the middle part always takes a precedence because an organism, human being, has to survive. So they will fight over things. Whereas the higher level, so the function of a religion is to develop the higher part, the central cortex, and reason of it, and try to eliminate the aggressive behavior. 
specific function to uh, violation as well as uh, the reason for conflict in this world is this higher function sometimes is not that very well and the middle part of the class higher part that is the reason for conflict so let us see where uh, the Hindu religion stands you know, there are uh, several religions in the world. This, this is the symbol of Hindu religion. Just like cross is for Christianity. This is the symbol. This is called the Om. The Om is a symbol in a language called Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a language called Latin. You know, Latin is a non-spoken non language you now. The same way Sanskrit also is not a spoken language, but it is like Latin with a great amount of literature. And many languages in India develop from that language. Just that uh, European languages develop from Latin. And I have studied Sanskrit and Latin, and I was amazed to find how much similarity there is in between these two languages. So that goes to say that they must have originated. On source. And uh, some people have done research on that. And they, people think both languages were related in Lithuania. Anybody know where that place is? Lithuania is a country in Europe, close to Russia. Probably that's where it came from. So this is a symbol. So I just showed this uh, uh, map of the world and we want to show where the, the Hindu religion originated in India almost 5,000 years ago. And this religion doesn't have a, a prophet like uh, Christ in Christianity, Muhammad in Islam. It did not originate from a single person. Over a period of 5,000 years, very highly developed individuals got new, fresh ideas, new ideas. So these ideas have been uh, brought together. That is how we this individual evolved. So I just want to mention the religions of the world. There is Christianity, the Hinduism, Islam. Buddhism, Judaism. And these are the areas where you find the different languages. The, the one in India is Hinduism. What you see in green is the area where Muslim religion predominates. And the yellowish areas are Christian. These are the three major religions. Judaism, of course, is in Europe and uh, Israel. And uh, there's another religion called Jainism. Have you heard of that? That also is a religion in India. But not many followers. Uh, there's another religion called Sikhism. Have you heard of that? This is also a religion in India. It's an offshoot of Hinduism. Sikhism and people were Turkish. Now there was this uh, came up globally. Uh, I went. I was uh, going to Western Michigan University at the time of nine eleven, and uh, some Sikhs uh, owned gas stations, and they were targets of hate uh, yeah. after nine eleven. Had nothing to do. This is not for the class, obviously. Yeah. You know, had nothing to do with Islam, um, but they were targeted. And... That's right. In Islam, also in Middle East. People wear turbans. Uh, some of them have turban. Islam, I mean, in Buddhism also they wear. So people must mistook the guy for a Muslim shop. Uh, that happened several places in this country. That's because people are not aware of things. Now, So, 
What is spirituality? Anybody have any idea? Spirituality is an in-depth knowledge or study of something uh, a higher power. So all of us are alive, the life goes on, and uh, it really goes into another. There is some power which makes this happen. And uh, there are several uh, things happening in the world. Even though it may look very confusing, there is a unifying force or factor which controls all these things. Just like, uh, for example, the forces of nature, gravity, electricity, electromagnetism, sound waves, these things function properly and there is a definite rules which regulate those things. Otherwise, none of these equipment will function. So what is what is the power which maintains disorder and make it work? The universal force which controls all this. The study and understanding of this is spirituality. And once a person tries to understand this power, then he may come to realize that it is a common factor for here. Everyone, not only in this room, but the whole universe, there is a force which is common to everything, a force which follows certain rules and regulations. The study of this is uh, spirituality. So I just mentioned about uh, the human nature and the lower and higher. Uh, instincts. So, study of religion is to understand these two instincts, higher and lower, and try to develop the higher power. I just put in a slide of certain uh, pictures here to break the monotony. In Hindu religion, this higher power is represented by various what we call gods. So, and there are gods, male and female. So this is the representation of that. And I want to mention uh, how can we define Hinduism. Hinduism is such a vast uh, collection of ideas and practices. There is no definite, uh, it really defies definition. It is very difficult to define it in, in, as a definite entity. And in Hindu religion, there is no single book which is an authority. It's like we have Bible or Quran in this There is no single book in Hinduism. We have taken as the book of our so several books, several ideas, it's all inclusive. Uh, another aspect of Hinduism is there is a, a belief is that a human being is not only the body, it has a soul. This is so that I spoke for about the uh, little while ago. All encompassing power which controls everything. So, human being also has some power. So, the belief is uh, it's not a yeah, human being is not only the body, it is a soul also, a spirit. And uh, we believe what is the purpose of religion? Purpose of religion. The ultimate aim is liberation. Liberation from what? Because human beings have struggled all through life. The end is struggle is the aim of the Hindu religion. The human beings struggle because 
an individual thinks that he is not perfect. There are some defects. And not as to the other person. So this feeling is there. It is in order to compensate this figure that this kind of feeling the person always troubles, troubles hard. That brings struggle and misery. And the Hindu religion says each individual is a part of the universal God. So the godliness is in every individual. Once you realize that, you are liberated from the struggles of the spirit. That is the idea. And Vedas is a text, a name of a textbook in Hindu religion that it goes back to about 5,000 years. So it is very often quoted as a book of authority. Another belief in Hindu religion is a belief in freedom. These individual values. The soul survives and he will get another person. The idea is if a person does good things in this life, in the next life, he will be born in a good family, he will get education. The person has done bad things in his life. His next life is in his life. So, that is, that is the belief. In a way, we can correlate that idea with generations. No, one generation produces the next generation. It is father and son. In a way, the qualities of the father is transferred to the son, the child, to the genes. So we can take this uh, river as a better uh, river or river. And another belief is a belief in uh, what is called Brahman. Brahman is the name given to this uh, universal power or force which controls everything in this world. So it is that belief. And uh, a word about the ethics. See, there are some people who do not believe in God. Even people who are ethics uh, can be in the world. Find that they believe that there is a soul. So these are a few things, brief things about the Hindu religion. I want to uh, mention about the basic tenets, that is, basic ideas in Hinduism. One is the grand structure of the universe. You might have heard uh, the Big Bang Theory. No one knows about Big Bang Theory. Um, so, at the beginning of the universe, uh, it's to be one tiny small point in reality, and then um, there is a bang, and then everything is going to be the same. That was uh, 14.5 billion years ago, scientists think that happened. How they discovered that was uh, after Einstein's theory of uh, um, uh, relativity, scientists discovered that the universe is expanding with the calculations. I'm talking about scientific theory, not for Hindu religion. So if the, if the universe is expanding, there must have been a time when it was a little small, a little small. By calculation, they found out that 14.5 billion years ago it must be a point. So at that point, there was a sudden explosion, and therein came 
all many of the atoms and molecules. These atoms are because subatomic electrons, neutrons, positrons. That was it at that time. Over a period of millions and millions of years, these unique subatomic particles came together, coalesced and became atoms. Atoms became molecules, and these molecules became clouds. It, then it became stars. Our sun came from that. And from the stars, the part came out. That's the so the origin is 14.5 million years ago. And it is those particles which uh, made this universe. And uh, it is said that it is from those particles, it is from that dust, stars came out and from the stars we came out. So these, every molecule or atoms in our body was came about and created at the moment. That is a theory nobody has disproved. So that is a scientific theory. Whereas in Hindu religion people thought exactly the same. They thought all the universe came from the same source. That is what it is. Grand structure of the universe. That man structure is what is Brahma. So we can correlate the big Brahma theory to this. That's what I mentioned. Mean. Another planet in Hinduism is law of cause and effect. No, for every thing you do, there is an effect. And if there is an effect, there must be a cause. It's, it's common, common sense. So Hindu religion believes in that, and that type of belief is what we have problem. So that means you do good things, good things come out. You do bad things, bad things come out. That is the idea. Reincarnation or rebirth, I will talk about. And the goal of human life is what I mentioned earlier. It's liberation. Liberation of the mysteries of life by understanding. All of us came from the same source. All of us have the same quality, purity, and energy of that original source. So there is, you are a unique person. That belief makes you liberate small things. And uh, there is a immemorial tradition that is, that tradition is uh, everyone should, uh, the practice of life, you know, how you conduct your life is uh, divided into three parts. Kama, Atta, and Mukha. Kama is you do good work, then whatever you want to do, and have a happy life. Then at the same time, Atta is you need to do all these activities of your life according to certain principles. Being truthful, loving, and you have to follow these regulations. Once you do this, more try is liberation. You will be liberated from the uh, miseries of life. And uh, as I mentioned, it is also our Hindu religion. There are a lot of Hindus and non orthodox. That is the beauty of Hindu religion. 
capacity evolved over 5,000 years. Many different highly evolved individuals gave a lot of ideas, sometimes even contradictory, but they are all included. This is a, a, a big statue in India. This is a, a representation of gods. In the religion, there are, in the world, there are different types of gods. The main thing is, even though this Brahman, uh, the universal force, is the supreme thing, the Hindus represented three aspects of going on in this world. One is creation, the other is maintaining what is created, and the other is instruction. These three things are going on in this world. The creation, creation, mainly for a while, and destruction. Just like uh, birth, life, and death. So these three things happen. So these three aspects are represented by an individual God. So for creation there is one, for maintenance there is another one. This God called Shiva is the one for this God. This is just like the person of the United States yeah. giving a portfolio to the So, I mentioned that uh, we are all came from this universal force. And in order to realize that, there are three methods uh, described in the religion. They are these three methods can be practiced all at the same time, or all together. One is jnana, that is knowledge, knowing that you are divine, you can come about. Second is, in order to realize that prayer or devotion, and action, executive function, Performance of duty is in terms of God to prove them. That's uh, one of the great contributions. This idea of performing all duties without uh, any regard to the outcome. That is what you have to do, you do your duty. Whatever the outcome is, you should not be swayed or Worried about it. For example, if you study hard, as they whether you pass or fail should not affect your mental equity. You pass, tell them to, if you learn, if you fail, fail. That attitude, without getting uh, swayed by the what the outcome is necessary. With the proper attitude. So these attitudes will help you uh, realize to find out the real uh, divine nature of yourself. That's the idea. Any questions on that? Are you following what I'm saying? Without the Bible, Bible, Christianity has to do this. Without a authority or a single book, how do you know what the duty is? What the action is? A lot of books, a lot of books gives you ideas, but uh, the Brahman and his uh, function or its role in the human life is an accepted thing. And Brahman has got certain universal principles. That's not questioned. 
the universal principles are how the universe works about you know i mentioned about gravity electromagnetism like that human life also i got certain universal uh, requirements and laws which govern it that is to be respected so there is no uh, choice in that that is how it is conceived in other words no written law like that you have to understand this so these um, three aspects uh, jnana bhakti and karma i'll come a little later how it can correlate with the uh, judiciary legislative and executive as we have in our country all our roman countries this is uh, another a picture of a temple in india our temple we are, we are building a temple in sagana for with this grandiose this is the one in order to understand the uh, hindu religion and compare the functioning of our our own government these three things judiciary legislative and uh, executive the whole function the legislative makes laws so the execution there is the judiciary the supreme court and the first the laws and the correct action so there is a checks and balances um, built in in a similar way you can look at these three functions i mentioned uh, on the bhakti what is the legislative and the execution is sometimes you know how to say let's look at that uh, top uh, thing the judiciary if it is very callous things can go wrong and it is rescued by legislature so so what our supreme court makes seven laws we used to be legislate the congress finds it not right? they can Law. In the same fashion, this Jnana is knowledge, Jnana is knowledge. The person who studies all this and become, can become very arrogant. That can be understood by Bhakti is prayer. So that arrogance of knowledge can be subdued. Just like arrogance of the judiciary can be excluded by the legislature. In similar fashion, with the legislature, that is, the prayer person, if it becomes too emotional and irrational, that can be excluded by the legislative and irrational judiciary. So in that, but the prayer is very irrational. Knowledge. Now, this uh, jnana is uh, you know knowledge. If that becomes self-absorbed uh, and neglected society, in other words, if the judiciary is self-absorbed, is uh, Means this is harmful to the society. It can execute it and correct it. The same way, none of that is ready. If they are self-absorbed, it can be rescued by karma. Karma is being on the duty. Same fashion, same way. Sometimes. Karma that is executed. If it is written, it is sent. 
judiciary and legislature and parliament. In the same way, if you are if your work, karma is very ecocentric, jnana is knowledge, and bhakti is right, and so on. So I put this as a, an example of how these three aspects I mentioned. Knowledge, work, and prayer. If you punish too much, it's too arrogant, you can be less good. Just like our three members of the world. That's all right. This is uh, uh, another temple. All these temples are uh, built. The planet is very easily available in India. This is about 300 feet high. So, how does Hinduism work? So, here again, uh, I gave a comparison between our political system and how Hinduism works. I think one half of the other means well, it is a democracy in the same fashion in Hindu religion. There is no established church. Each individual of the society can pray on their own. So, free to choose one spiritual life. There is no definite big terms of the world. And in our political system, you choose your own representative. Yes. That is why the government God has been manifested in many divine forms. As I mentioned, these three, one for creation, maintenance, and destruction, you can choose any other of the it's like, you know, you choose your God, like you choose your representative. This is the interior of another temple. Then, in our system, may, you may or may not cast your vote. So, you are free to live in one God or no God. Freedom is there. Do you believe in multiple gods, though? Do you believe in multiple gods? Yeah, okay. Is there a picture of another temple? Democracy is a process, and elected representatives can change or reverse policies. One example is uh, abolition of slavery. So, uh, Hinduism also is a process. You know, they, they, they used to have the caste system there. That was a problem. And uh, our the locus of all ways of the people is our constitution. And as I mentioned, Vedas. There are six hundred where the two five followers. So in our system, who can be a leader? Any American can be elected president. Yes, any Hindu or any female can be a spiritual leader. So we have in our system separation of church and state. So also the king and the priest are demarcated. Their functions are demarcated. See, 
main contribution to contemporary life is one can perform action without seeking the benefits thereof. It's a mental barrier. All one should do is to do, to do your work properly. Should not be uh, the worry how whether it is done well or not should not influence your career. But the idea is when you are doing something, and if you are worried about the outcome, your performance will not be that good. For example, your studies. When you are studying, you always want to be like that, and you are going to be able to study that. So that's the idea. So don't worry about what is going to happen. Try to do your best. So by this way, you can bring the, uh, the all the energy and capacity we have to do the proper thing. This is the last uh, behind the final project to in this class. You look at number one. <laughs> so many students ask me, how do I get my points? Yeah, this is a little bit of my points. If I try to explain this, you don't do it for the points. <laughs> That's it. You, you do it for the sake of knowing that. And then doing it properly. See, it is not easy to get that attitude and work in that sense. It takes a lot of uh, intuition to do that. Because we are always worried about the results. It is in our genes. So what you're suggesting is that doing the duty will try to act so that you end up for themselves. Thank you. So like um instead of uh getting something in return, right? Um what you're doing is you do the act to justify itself. That's right. Yeah. Uh, always should have the attitude and doing this not for any other things. Very easy to say. And at the face value, it may look like a foolish statement. Our American system is goal oriented. So we are far from the very kindergarten, that kind of attitude. This is really the same. That is not your focus. Your focus should be doing what you want. So this is the thing. Mm -hmm. In modern uh, uh, executives in big uh, companies are having to realize that a lot of executives and uh, big companies like Coca Cola, in their training classes, they emphasize this point. See, once you do the duty properly, the outcome is there. That is very difficult to do. So that's the principle. If you can keep this principle in mind, it will be worth what spending time with me today. Uh, so that is number one. Second is it is a metaphysical insight. The seeker that is worth seeking the God, you and the God. You know, See the seeker. That is you. It's none other than the song, God I Divine. Because it is God who manifested in you. This is a little bit changing. So, once you understand that, you become a very calm, collected person, try to help others, and you know, disaster comes. You can still maintain the tranquility. This is a profound idea, difficult, difficult to talk about. So that is one. The main thing is you are that. It's the main message of Hinduism. There's a word for that, word for that in Sanskrit, of Thomas. It means you are that. That is the message. 
So these are the ones which uh, I wanted to mention today. Now I can answer any question. Um, Christianity, the main religion here in the United States, um, a lot of churches and practices that have a lot of good music. Yes, that is. I told you about these three things knowledge, prayer, and uh, duties. In that prayer, they will bring in a lot of music. The reason is music is one thing which subdues or mellows the mid level of our brain. The midbrain is always active, it's very vigilant. Remember those three aspects. One is lower part of the brain, just for survival. Middle, emotions. Higher one, intellect, intellect, knowledge. So the middle part is always vigilant to find this aspect. Seek happiness. So when this anxiety comes, it's on the midbrain. So music, how many effect on that? How music works in that is now I gave the medicine. See, the emotions come because of certain what is called neuro neurotransmitters. In the midbrain, all these emotions are created. Yield by serotonin, norepin, norepinephrine, adrenaline, and some things. Serotonin is a chemical neurotransmitter. It subdues, calms the brain. The norepinephrine, adrenaline, creates commotion. So the music yes, slows down the production of this uh, agitating neurotransmitter. I'm not going into your neurology class now. Um, so like Christianity, we usually worship on uh, Saturday or Sunday, we go to mass and you know Islam at certain times of the day that they would pray. Do you have a certain time of day you pray? Yeah, it's really very difficult. No specific time. Any time of the day. But you don't have any services, we are just building in the church. But in Hinduism, you can have a prayer in your own home. That's a concept. Okay. Sort of remind the class that uh, one of the purposes of the speaker series uh, originated from my first set of slides that I would do after spring break. We have a textbook, and there's a chapter in the textbook called Previous Sacred Power. And I created a whole set of slides, it's a lot of time on it, and I sat back and I think this, this does not give the students value for their education. But we need to give slides. Chapter and book of the Sacred Covenant. This is much more valuable, um, but also, not to say what you question, you, you did not mention the Sacred Cow whatsoever, so it's kind of, that was kind of cool to see that. Um, can you just follow up and explain maybe um, why it didn't make it into a slideshow or the value of uh, a, you know, Sacred Cow, what it means? Yeah. See, the sacred cow is not so so called sacred in India, you see. That came out to the Western society because it's something exciting. The Hindu religion considers cow as an animal which gives not a good things for human beings. Milk is very essential. In the modern societies, that is the main source of proteins. Many Hindus are vegetarians. 
So the only protein is milk. Okay. So they said better you should not kill cows for eating. You will give milk. So cow has been uh, essential for uh, human beings to live. So they made it <coughs> we have to save cows. That's the idea. And uh, of course. In our society, Western society, we will eat cows. So that came as a very strange thing. That was put it Then in the English language, the sacred cow phrase came as a phrase to us. Anything which is very essential, you should not destroy. The face is sacred cup. Right? <clears throat> That's how it came about. That's why I didn't mention here. It's okay. so important for the students to understand that and really think deeply about what is going on here, which is in our class we talk about ethnocentrism. And I you know I continue to tell them that the book, which I almost started in the film of trash. It's, a, it's an ethnocentric, it's one perspective, why we go and base all, all of our knowledge off of the book that was written by someone who's not Hindu. You know, it makes no sense to go down that road. And we do this so many times um, through the media, through the education system. We only reinforce our own pre existing ideas. Um, and we, that's why I do not want to get that. So I'm writing uh, a paper on uh, wrestling in different cultures. Now I understand that um, Hindu is a very non-violent religion, and I like that. However, um, it comes from India, and uh, most countries tend to have uh, combat sports like you know, like boxing, wrestling, much less. I was wondering if you were aware of India had it. It is. It is there, but not uh, not a big. Uh, Sports like in our country, yeah. nothing like that. Rarely there may be some. Athletics are encouraged, but not combat. Talking of the multi culturalism, <coughs> the contact of Sagina with Hinduism, part of 1892 actually. <clears throat> a great Hindu scholar came to this Sayana Bay City and gave some lectures in 1992. I got those uh, reports from Sayana But in modern times, uh, um, a few family, uh, Hindu families in Sayana, how they came about is <clears throat> mostly adopters. There are about 100 doctors in this area in India, mostly Hindus. Because there is a need for a doctor in India. That is all. That is all. Association of Hindus and Sati. Yeah. There are lots of them in Dow Chemical. Yeah, there are engineers and software. Okay. Good morning, my teacher. I'm HIV. Um, so, I'm going to be the person to see maybe someone that is HIV as having lived a bad past life, but the 
Would you want to help them, or do you think they're living off their karma? No, I tell you, you don't think that that's a karma. It is a disease. That is a disease. <clears throat> you don't eradicate our own government. It is a said that males and females spiritual leaders in Hinduism both genders, I think that's been great. Can you talk about a couple of these things? Oh yes, uh, um, an equal number of men and women spiritual leaders in India. And, uh, equal number of gods, male and female. There are. So it's a very Any other questions? When you think about it, let me answer this call, okay?
which is the statues and temples of the group show us were so magnificent. I'm a huge fan of statues and stuff like that. Uh, the temple you guys are building is it a game? Oh, they don't have to pay If you want to see that, you can go to the And they last some of them are one thousand years old, or about two, three thousand years old. And they did that, and they did that for them. Well, I'm saying a lot of temples that are that old, I'll even say anything. These are the areas where you find the different languages. The, the one in India is Hinduism. What you see in green is the area where Muslim religion predominates. And the yellowish areas are Christianity. These are the three major religions. Judaism, of course, is in Europe and Israel. And you have there's another religion called Jainism. Have you heard of that? That also is a religion in India. But you have many followers in that. There's another religion called Sikhism. Have you heard of that? This is also a religion in India. It's an offshoot of Hinduism. Sikhism and people were pilgrims. That's what it is. In other words, this uh, uh, I, went, I was uh, going to Western Michigan University at the time of 9 11, and uh, some Sikhs uh, owned gas stations, and they were targets of hate uh, yeah. after 9 11. had nothing to do, this is not for the class, obviously, yeah. you know, had nothing to do with Islam, uh, but they were targeted. Right. That's right. In Islam, also, in the Middle East, people wear turbans. Uh, some of them have turban. Islam, I mean, in Buddhism also they wear. So people must mistook the guy for a Muslim shop. Now, uh, that happened several places in this country. That's because people are not aware of things. Now, one is a lower level. The lower level is struggle to survive. Something that is good. The higher level is love, respect, intellect, and uh, this, these levels are uh, actually represented in our brain. But our brain has developed. The evolution of more than four to five million years. So, the structure of the brain is that I will include a little bit of medical in that because I am a medical person. 
brain is structured in general three levels. One is the lowest level, called high brain or the middle level. That area subserves the function of making the person survive, live. That is breathing, respiration, and circulation. The breathing and circulation is the function of the lowest part of the brain, that is the high brain or middle level. The middle part is in respect to emotions, love, hate, anger, aggression. So these uh, functions were necessary in the early survival of our ancestors. You know, they fight, get food, and escape from danger and all that. So that level function in the middle level, that's called mid-tail. And where the higher level is, the cerebral part. That is the area where reasoning, intelligence, and respect, love, everything is controlled by them. So the middle part always takes a precedence because an organism, human being, has to survive. So they will fight over things. That is higher level, subdues that. So the function of a religion is develop the higher part, the central problems, and reason out, and try to eliminate the aggressive. So, what is spirituality? Anybody have any idea? Spirituality is an in-depth knowledge of study of something a higher power. See, all of us are alive, the life goes on, and uh, the baby goes into another. There is some power which makes this happen. And uh, there are several uh, things happening in the world. Even though it may look very confusing, there is a unifying force or factor which controls all these things. Just like, uh, for example, the forces of nature, gravity, electricity, ele electromagnetism, sound waves, these things function properly and there is a definite rules which regulate those things. Otherwise, none of these equipments will function. So what is, what is the power which maintains this order and make it work? The universal force which controls all this. The study and understanding of this is spirituality. And once a person tries to understand this power, then he may come to realize that it is a common factor for here. Everyone, not only in this room, but the whole universe, there is a force which is common to everything, a force which follows certain rules and regulations. This is a study of this is uh, spirituality. So I just mentioned about uh, the human nature and the lower and higher. Uh, instincts. So, study of religion is to understand these two things. This is function of why we should have religions. And the reason for conflict in this world is this higher function sometimes is not that very well. And the middle part so let us see where uh, the Hindu religion stands. You know, there are uh, several religions in the world. This, this is the symbol of Hindu religion. Just like cross is for Christianity, this is the symbol. This is called the O. The O is uh, 
symbol in a language called Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a language called Latin. You know, Latin is a non-spoken non language. No. In the same way Sanskrit also is not a spoken language. But it is like Latin with a great amount of literature. And many languages in India develop from that language. Just that uh, European languages develop from Latin. And I studied Sanskrit and Latin. And I was amazed to find how much similarity there is in between these two languages. So that goes to say that they must have originated from one source. And uh, some people have done research on that. And they People think both languages were related to Lithuania. Anybody know where that place is? Lithuania is a country in Europe, close to Russia. Probably that's where it came from. So, this is a symbol. So, I just showed this uh, uh, map of the world, and we want to show where. We the Hindu religion originated in India almost 5,000 years ago. And this religion doesn't have a, a prophet like uh, Christ in Christianity, Muhammad in Islam. It did not originate from a single person. Over a few or wants to rewatch it. Um, actually, the last one was on video, so if you want the link to the video, um, I can send you that. And we're getting this one on video and also on audio. And so the audio will be on iTunes. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get it done. Um, but I won't waste too much more time because we have our fantastic guest speaker today, our third in our series. We're about halfway through our guest speaker series. And today, um, we have a guest speaker who I reached out to and contacted through the Tri-Cities Hindu Temple. And I got a response back, and the gentleman said, uh, this is Dr. Karu. And I said, do you know how to get to the classroom? Do you know anything about Saginaw Valley State University? Uh, and he replied, yes, I used to sit on the Board of Regents here at Saginaw. Valley, and uh, he played a role in the decision to uh, build the health sciences building right next door. So he's a little bit more than a, a regular guest speaker for us. Maybe you'll have other questions for him about that. But he's uh, definitely here representing the Tri-City Hindu Temple and his uh, own culture and uh, background. So I don't know much about him or his background, so I will be here to learn just as much as you will. So without further ado, Dr. Kalu. Thank you, John. So nice to see all of you, you know, bright young faces. My name is, as John said, Dr. Kuru. I'm a surgeon in Saginaw. I've been here for more than 36 years. Uh, apart from doing operations, I've been associated with this university. I was in the Board of Control, and in fact, I was the chairman of the Board of Control here. Uh, now, I want to speak about Hindu religion. Before I speak about Hindu religion, let us find out what religion is. In order to understand religion, we need to understand human nature. Human nature is, you know, you know some people are good, some are bad. What is that? So every human being has got two levels of functioning. 